It is on record that Ghana accepted about 13 Liberian refugees on humanitarian grounds during the era of Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlins. At the time, they were fleeing the first civil war in Liberia between 1989 and 1996. Through the efforts of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR, the refugees came in in batches and settled on a 141-acre land to be known as the Liberian Refugee Camp at Budumbirim in the Gomwa East district of the central region, known to be the biggest refugee camp in Ghana. The camp is zoned into areas from 1 to 9 to accommodate the influx of refugees there. Yeah, I came here in 1990. By that time, I was just 22 years old. And now I'm married with children on the camp. I came here in 2002. February 4th, I came in, and I came with a family, but well, unfortunately some are dead, yeah, and I've been here for like over like 20 years now, and by the grace of God we were able to get adjusted to the situation, the living condition, we were able to get adjusted with the living condition here, and uh, I am a family still here. My wife and my children, we are all still here. Schools, health posts, communication equipment, vocational and technical centers, water and sanitation, hygiene facilities, among others were all made available by the UNHCR, Government of Ghana, international NGOs and other companies to create a home away from home for the refugees. So are places of worship for the various denominations to help the people find solace and communion with their maker. As the years went by, the refugees, through their own initiatives, mobilized resources to set up some viable ventures and social amenities tailored to suit them. This pipe is uh, being managed by Point, Point Hope. Point Hope is an international organization that came on the camp through us. A certain refugee had contact with a lady called Delilah. So the doc pick on the scam to get water, you know, that time we were just buying water from the tankers. But then it, it was not working, so she has to pay a huge sum of money to connect with the national pipe, you know. So this water is running, for now they take care of it. But it is running all in the camp, for that it's taken care of by the government. From zone 1 to zone 9? Yeah, from zone 1 to zone 9. In which year was oh. this facility built? It's 2005, 6. Those things were all built. So since the 90s you came, you were still buying water from the tankers? Absolutely speaking. How difficult was this for you to survive? Very, very difficult. Those of you who are working and you have salary, you buy water to drink, you should know how difficult it is. Then somebody who was not working, they just came here. So we were drinking the water from the tanker. Many from the Ouija, we didn't know what we buy to drink. It was taking care. Aside point of GH, do you have any other uh, source of drinking water that was built by an NGO to augment this existing one? Absolutely no. So this is the only one serving the entire community sure, yeah. of a population of how many people? This is not the only pipe. This pipe is running all around. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure you are going to reach some more pipe. The population here will be about 34,000. If you really take a census here, you know that 
This is a very big camp. I'm interested in the name, Survivor Water. Survivor why, Water. Why such a name? Well, you see, Point Hope gave the water to some vulnerable family members. So, this guy sell this water and he gets percentage and his family survive upon it. So I'm more sure the definition is that he's surviving on this water along with his family. And then to an extension the entire, the entire community, yes, yeah, that wish was not there. All right. In 1997, election deemed free and fair, returned Liberia to democratic governance. The welcoming news of peace was a relief, but this was short-lived following the Second Civil War from 1999 to 2003. There was a window of opportunity for people fleeing the war to settle in Ghana at the already established camp known for its bustling activities. A number of Liberians with their dependents came to the community. Soon, several programs were rolled out aimed at capacity development to equip the refugees to be self-reliant and economically empowered. In time, the camp became home to other refugees, such as the Sierra Unions, following a decade of similar civil war in their home country from 1991 to 2001. Over three decades on, immigration has metamorphosed this location into a cosmopolitan community with people from different cultures, languages and countries residing at the Budumburim Liberian camp. The spillover saw camps 10, 11 and 12 established to include other nationals taking advantage of the freebies in the camp. Currently, there are 3,500 Liberians, Togolese, Burkina Bays, Ivorians, Sudanese, Cameroonians, Nigerians, and some 19,000 Ghanaians, among others. Stability in Liberia in 2004 meant time for all Liberians to unite to rebuild their country, giving room for Liberian refugees in Ghana a second chance to go back home. That began plans to decommission the camp, which was finally accepted years later. In 2012, the UN invoked a cessation clause, ending their status as refugees in Ghana in accordance with a 1951 refugee convention. Uh, at the time that the cessation clause was being invoked, and the cessation clause is um, when uh, the decision is taken by all countries holding hosting refugees, Liber uh, Liberian refugees specifically, uh, and then also uh, the Liberian government itself and the UN. A uh, decision is taken that it is safe enough for those who fled the war or the disturbances to go back. Um, what this meant was that anybody who was a refugee uh, for the reason of uh, the wars that the war that took place, uh, did not have any any reason to continue being a refugee uh, because at the time, and, and this was in 2012, uh, the, the, the clause was invoked in December of 2012. At the time, Liberia had had two successive successful elections, and uh, the police, uh, all the civil structures were in place. The police. Uh, 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 were functioning properly. Uh, courts were also functional. Uh, there were there were uh, systems in place to ensure the safety uh, for all citizens of Liberia. And so the international community decided that the, it was time to invoke the cessation clause. And this came into effect on uh, December 31st, 2012. The UNHCR and the Ghana Refugee Board began actively promoting voluntary repatriation. A tripartite committee was formed to negotiate the process. We saw a high-level Liberian delegation visiting Ghana to encourage more people to return home. So at the time, there were two options. Uh, there was voluntary repatriation, which meant the refugees returned to their country of origin in safety and in dignity. Uh, now the key word here is voluntary because nobody was forced to return to the country of origin. And then there was the option of local integration. Our 
local integration package uh, meant that the refugees would live in Ghana as Liberian nationals, live here legally. And so uh, the Liberian government came to Ghana, uh, vetted the applicants, issued them with Liberian passports, biometric passports, which were paid for at the time by the UNHCR. Uh, Ghana government issued them with residence permits. Um, uh, again, Ghana government's contribution to that residence permit was 50% of the cost of the residence uh, permit. And then UNHCR paid the other 50%. For those who locally integrated, they were also given a small cash grant just to help them away, uh, sorry, just to help them along the way. Not, it wasn't something that they were supposed to live on for the rest of their lives. Um, and then they were also given one year's uh, national health insurance uh, subscription. And so they, they had the national insurance card valid for one year. Uh, those were the, the, that was the package that was given to them. So it was there. Those who opted for local integration received some grants with the plans to resettle elsewhere. Though they took the money on offer, the refugees continued to reside at the camp. First of all, I told integration, local integration in the Ghana. I told integration, and some people say that they can't go, they can't stay, but for me, I told integration. How was the integration process? How did it go for you? Oh, well, I told take the integration, let's say the Danish government gave cash grant to Liberian as a whole, and were able to issue $200 each. At times, go by say the $200 was used for renting, and can you, you just said, you can't rent house for a year into a 200, 800 city. Can you rent place for you in Ghana? Yeah? They can't make it. So that's why we have to stay on the candles. See how best we can move around. So when you were giving the $200 for reintegration, they expected you to move out of the camp. But no. Because it was not enough? No. They never asked to leave the camp at the time to get $200. They say for local integration, those who do local integration, we reintegrate in the Ghanaian society. Like for me, we were just being. Call, call, but we never got anything out of it. The basis for them deciding to opt for local integration was that, number one, they had lived here for so long, decades for some of them. They had economic, and that's important, economic and social ties here that would enable them live here comfortably, uh, work, sustain themselves, and contribute to society through paying taxes and so on. And so that was made very clear to them that they were not going to stay here, continue staying here as refugees. The second thing is that for local integration, we made it clear to them that the land did not belong to government. A land, the land belonged to private people, private individuals. Whoever were deemed the owners of the land would eventually come for their land. And so, they were told to live, find alternative shelter outside Buduburam. From 2012, when we implemented the, uh, when the cessation clause was invoked, and the, the, some of them opted for local integration, some of them opted for voluntary repatriation, the, we ceased referring to Buduburam as a camp. Once we had, in 2013, once we had completed or uh, we had uh, uh, implemented all the, 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 the packages, the local integration package that we, 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 were, we were meant to. What has been the case is that because nobody came chasing them, those who locally integrated, they're still there. Secondly, some refugees opted for voluntary repatriation, were given free transportation home, were given a cash grant also, um, and then they were received in Liberia by the Liberian government and UNHCR and helped along the way. Some of them went to Liberia and returned to Ghana, to Buduburam. So there are lots of such people also there. So, to the Ghana Refugee Board and the UNHCR, the Buduburam camp was decommissioned on December 2012. And therefore, it discontinued offering services rations and any form of support to the refugees still at the camp, leaving them to their fate. 
at the exits of the Liberians. Other nationals, including Ghanaians, took advantage of the emptiness of space to occupy the rooms. Now, some are landlords who rent out these rooms. Now, their stay is in jeopardy. Custodians of the land want their property back. To the residents, it's still a refugee camp. But to custodians of the land, it is a den for criminals. And the nefarious activities denting the image of Gomwa, more of a national security issue. Prostitute, <laughs> Mbe or man, in a fete man, in a bunumbram, in a central region. Nekunku or Kodu or Nisa Suntina Yatunsa, Fra Bande, Omeden, Ome Budamo, in Dian. Na on your dance so on your dance, Sebi, Nipa to Mu High, now on your neighbour, Wadim, or your dance in kissing Kitibi as a wild corner Kosha, Bunda on your dine. Na Nisa Suntina Yama, a bind Yatunsa, Fra Bande, Omo Boyana. Most of the refugees at the camp now are first, second and third generation refugees, meaning some are descendants and either came as toddlers or were born here in Ghana by the first settlers. The Gibson brothers say they have not known any other home than the Budumburium refugee camp. As for me, I love Ghana a lot. I've been here since I was five years old. I love Ghana. I want to be in Ghana for the rest of my life. Yeah. Do you understand? I have three children here. One is a Ghanaian, one is a Liberian, and one is a Nigerian. I hope you understand. Yeah. And and I love Ghana and I love Ghana a lot. You understand? We have, we have our parents on this camp who don't have anything at all. I don't have money. I'm, I'm just a common refugee here. You understand? My parents are here. My mother is here. My father is here. My children are here. I don't have nowhere to go to. I've been here for years now, since I was a small boy. I went to school here, and I, I graduated here from this simple the Brown Refugee Community School. And this country is not our own. We are here because of the war that takes place in our country, and we are residing here. And we thank the Ghana government enough for making us stay here a long period of time. UN need to take a step to either reset to us or find a better era for us. We are in another country now in this, this is 21st century. There is development taking place each and everywhere in every country now in this. So we are not angry with the Ghana government that they want to carry on a development in the country. Who we are angry with is UNACRO. They need to come to our aid. We need you to come to our aid. You need to either find means to reset to us Take us to another land, or you find an era for us. Sure. Yes, because now, now, as we are talking, some of us don't have nowhere to go. And, and to number two is, we experience war. And nine days, I only came here. We doing one or two or more our people to survive. Some people they don't have no means of surviving. Now you take us from here, we go and find ourselves in another community that the life there is not good. That's the kind of lifestyle we adapt to and start to live. We've been here with our people, we want to be here, and we want to ask you and they should come to our aid or they should reset to us. We are tired. Me ya kwa uni, but me ma ya Liberia for. And I'm in Liberia in a way. But my better camp was saying, no, I'm not in favor with that all the things that are going on. Because I get Liberia children. My husband is a Liberian, and I'm here for Liberian favor. My husband, my husband is here. 
I, I went to Liberia. I went to Liberia. I go see where my children are. So I take it in a favor for my children for Liberians. I doing everything. I can cook meat and soup. I go say. I do my hard job on behalf of my children. So I will not sit down here for my children to suffer or whatsoever. I'm a Ghanaian. And you know, me baby be my I survive my mano. Send a bear because I'm a papa. Or me beside his car, I'm a nyadri, we saw a pesca. It's not it doesn't go right. You have people you kept here. We have documents to prove to Ghana. And we are even sharing to all the embassies in Ghana. You got refugees here, hostage. You told us to be integrated. You are going to relocate off from here somewhere else. Since 2013, up to this present, we are still here. Why would you go to and tell people that there are no refugees there? Have you settled law? No. No. So we have decided to go further. Beyond Ghana Refugee Board. You people ever come break your camp, come with 10 bodos. Emotions are high and some are pleading for more time to find an alternative place to call home. The only thing I, I was kind of thinking about is that the time is very short. Demolition cannot be stopped. But I was looking at, if I had my own power, I'm going to appeal to those who wanted to do demolition to see how best if they can extend the time for us. Because frankly speaking, the time is very short. We talk, we're talking about a few weeks. Even if I were renting in your house, and my renting time is over, and you want me to leave your house, according to rentage rules, they will tell you, they, they, they will tell you to give me three months to find somewhere to go. Three months period. So it, it's like I'm, I, I came to rent, but my rent is over. But if you're telling me that I have from now to September 30th, that is very short for me. So if I had my power, if I had the power and the will to talk to the people who want to do demolition, I could appeal to them to extend the time. I don't have a problem with demolition. This is not my country. This is not my land. It's for Ghana. And I'm not a Ghanaian, I'm a Liberian. I came here to seek refuge. And maybe my time is over. But in the process of week, few weeks, in the process of few weeks, and you want to demolish, where do I keep my property? Where do I keep my family? I right now I can't do anything because who brought me here? I came here on the umbrella of the UN. So we just waiting to see how you, what you can do, what step they can take. And we just appealing the Ghana government to come to intervene that we can help out. Because if you demolish me, what will go from here? You have a lot of people be homeless, sleep on the street. I mean, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be so, so healthy for us, you understand? One day I went to U.S.C. office and even Ghana Rojibo asking them, if you say you will relocate the people, here is the, the bulletin board. Those who you, are, you have for relocation, place that name on the board so that we know them. Those who you, who, or U.S.C. are going to say, yeah, these people, the cases for them are credible, even to be resettled in the third country, place that name on the board. Then those who are not involved in the two cases, they can be reported back home to Liberia, or they can register and go back home. But if we are left in, in dark, and we do not know what we are doing here, nobody knows who you are integrating, nobody knows who you will get. Everybody, they are here waiting to implement your job. And if you do not implement it, we'll all be here and waiting for you to implement your job to the fullest. There are others, like some Ghanaians who have rented a place within the camp, such as the case of this university graduate living at a camp with her family. My name is Swa, and I'm a member of the And I'm a member of the family. 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 Notice normal, the mind, eh, too short. Two months notice there. It's even any up to two months. Because what you are just last, I think last two weeks, and nobody noticed me out. And at two months, up to 30th of next month, they are too short. So I want to for at least six months to one year. And also, I'm able to make a job at your home time, now you to me, I am able to make a job. I want to shop, I want to say. So I just want to have friends and make a cup of shop. And some baby, I have a dad. You know, I have a fat lady, you know. So what are you doing? University of Bering. University of Professional Studies. Who is here, Bering? 2018. I told you, you know, I'm going to tell you a story about the camp. And I said, as a graduate, did you read anything about the camp? About the camp, I'm, 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 I'
Ma, where's your German? Yeah, because the name is already there. Say it's Liberia camp. No, no, no. Because the, the name is already there. What you do you now? My rent is there. Eh, your rent no there. Yeah, can your rent now? You you in So you're living here free. And you're free. Yeah, you're done here. Yeah, there. Yeah, you see. Officially, the boundary of the Liberian refugee camp ends at Zone 9, with the others, Zone 10, 11 and 12, acquired by private individuals, though the land had the UNACR building on them at the time of purchase. Their fate is also in limbo, as parts of Zone 10, 11 and 12 have been earmarked for demolition. Say the man one four years will be renewed. After four years, no one to renew so be cool crew man. The house is not for you. Until library any be over here, you want a document to all. You did any rooms I will see any you or the tea any school to ya. Up in the woods, see Antina, a bear this and give it to me in the natural. Ah, actually, say, will be a new, will be our hammer. What other house to free, say, a hot year. You know, say, it will be. You and Foka said there will be no more refugees on camp. So, Papa, no, or the Omoko court. Court people in our home, your court court, ah, yeah, yeah, as I see the film, see. And see you two, be a library, and you will have your two. And see you two now, Papa, no, a Nedia, now a tongue. Now a tongue. And the tongue or tongue, Mom, will be our document. Yes, my son, it will be a document here, Tom. Eight, nine. One and last up, no, no. I didn't come. Don't tell, don't come. Don't tell. You're not busy, you're busy. Now, say, be so with my infi. When you're ha, you know you're ti. Inti when you're my infi, no other waba ha. Inti on inti other other pe upini be waba ha. No other you know what na ho. You know, pay now on onfa fi names. Anana din be an inti. Se ope anana inti chimo a other me ni me ya otumuba na chine maliki. For now, may may catch up and So we are not going to, I mean, plead with anyone there. Uh, uh, to them. In the honey, yes, two land. As it stands, September 30, 2021. The Liberian refugee settlement will be closed by the Gomwa traditional authorities with no room for negotiations. Uh, the Ghana Refugee Board and the UNACR have plans to relocate some 330 Liberians in good standing as refugees.
if you take uh, some kind of census there, you would realize that only 350 or roughly 350 Liberians there are still refugees. Uh, the reason why they are still refugees was that um, whenever the cessation clause is invoked, we give the opportunity for refugees who think that they have such peculiar circumstances that they cannot return to Liberia, uh, and, or, sorry, they cannot return to their country of origin to stay. And they also cannot locally integrate. So we interviewed them, there's a, an in-depth interview, and a few of them uh, maintained their refugee status. And so it is only that roughly 350 who are still refugees, who are still in Budubura. No, no, if he's talking about 350 refugees, then they are not the locally integrated refugees, no. He's talking about people who claim to be successful and continue to be refugees. He was never talking about people who took local, local integration. He was never talking about people who he was supposed to relocate into a place and give them protection, you know, and give them social economic benefits and make them to, to, to live and be free as West African here. He was to relocate people who don't need to be under threat of eviction. They were supposed to live somewhere where definitely they should have peace of mind and feel very comfortable as they have been due to the attitude of the people of Ghana. Very, very amicable. Some are also considering the impact of the decision, alleging that the Ghana Refugee Board is yet to return their passports, which had been taken to the Ghana Immigration Service for renewal. Others are citing the closure of the borders due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So, returning home is near impossible. Given the fact that Ghana Immigration Service has their own regular work they do, that they do, uh, are the visa issuing, sorry, uh, permit issuing session, sections. Unfortunately, issuance has been a bit slow but even with that, we've had discussions with them, and I can tell you that Ghana Immigration Service has increased the rate of issuance of the renewal for the, the residence permits. So that is what they mean by we seized their passports. We have not seized anybody's passports. The passports are coming from Liberia. They were slow last year because of uh, COVID. Uh, they started coming in. Uh, I think now we've received all of them. But we don't issue the visas ourselves, the, res the permits ourselves. Ghana Immigration Service does that. And we've, 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 we pass these um, residence permits to Ghana Immigration Service. They issue them as and when they receive them and they are able to. That, I admit, has been slow. Uh, and so that is what is causing the agitation. But I would really like to correct the fact that nobody has seized anybody's passport. In the camp of the inhabitants at the Budumburium refugee settlement are uncertainties, but that of the traditional authorities is a clear path of reclaiming what rightfully belongs to them.